Welcome back to Coriander Society Adventures. Go away. Bad button. Press the bad button. <laughs> Welcome back to Coriander Society Adventures, <laughs> the professionally produced Casters and Castles show featuring myself, your game master, technical director, producer, writer, uh, janitor, and chef, Joseph Tormented by Gnomes, along with Ninja Man Matt and Pods of War, who are completely indispensable. Welcome back from the break. Everything's fine. We're fine. How are you? He's not lying about the chef part. Like you did yeah. feed us before, so that's that true. Counts. That is technically true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably cook though, not chef. I haven't done yeah. any of those Food Network challenges. It'd be weird <laughs> if someone was like, "Yes, chef." Bachelor. <laughs> bachelor Chow. Yes, I'm not yeah. a bachelor, but I, I specialize in bachelor Chow. That's correct. Yeah, when yeah, last yeah. we left our heroes, uh, we were doing a giveaway. So before I get back into like all the the narrative stuff and the story stuff, let's just do this real quick. And. Wonder of Wonders, Miracle of Miracles. <laughs> Walking Armory has won the giveaway. Congratulations. We're going to do another one later on in the show. And we're going to give away a copy of a hardcover copy. Uh, you know what? No, let's let's do another one right now. I'll just start it now and then we'll, we'll pull the trigger call. later. Yeah. So call. Walking Armory is the winner. Going to note that down. Walking Armory. I will contact you after the show because I've got a bunch of stuff I have to take care of during the show. Like the show. Uh, but let me go ahead and what? let's do another giveaway. You don't giveaway. do anything. I know, I know. I'm a. I know. What the heck, man? Slacking, massive slacking. All you're doing is, you know, running the creation, execution, and uh, enjoyment of an entire world with a. This is great my favorite part characters. about Matt now running his own shows because now he's in the <laughs> he's like pulling all the knobs and switches and he's going, oh my god. You know, our entire relationship is always, hey, Matt, this is Joe talking, by the way. Hey, Matt, here's a really cool thing that I do. Oh, that's really interesting. Hey, you should join me. Okay. Oh, my God. This is very hard. I have a newfound respect for what you do. I knew it. Yay. <laughs> and then that's our relationship. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Uh, we've done one cosmic dragon for the first giveaway. We're going to do the other cosmic dragon for the second giveaway. Exclamation mm. point. Kur. K-U-R in chat to make yourself That's eligible for that. That's much easier. That is yeah, much yeah. easier. I mean, you still yeah. have to spell it because there's a lot of ways that that could be spelled, but yeah. it's significantly easier. I'm willing to bet that not a lot of people entered that giveaway just because the word itself was daunting. Yeah, I would have looked at that and said, okay, man, keep your book. <laughs> <laughs> that. A double A? No, can't type yep. that out. Gotharius. Not Levios. Oh, I get it. You're putting the space because you don't want to be entered into the thing. Right. I mean, it, it wouldn't anyways, oh, you but, you know. Oh. Well, then you just made it confusing. Don't I was going to say. Don't question my methods. Look, <laughs> that's how we troubleshoot. I have to state the obvious and you go, oh my gosh, you're right. That's our relationship, by the way. Okay. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's pretty true. That's true. <laughs> All right, so I took care of some stream loots stuff. I started a new giveaway, exclamation point core in chat. Yeah, just like that, some guy. Uh, I think that's all the housekeeping stuff that we had to do. We can play some more D&D &D now, right? Yay. Any objections? Going once, going twice. I mean, I don't have any objections. I am a little worried about getting flooded, is the thing. Yeah, that could happen. Okay. I'm not uh, die. <laughs> Probably the best usage yet. When last we left our... <laughs> what? What? I was going to say, what happened? Something happened. I forgot to send you guys the link so that you could see these as they drop. Oh, no. Because you dropped the Flesh of Kerr, didn't you? Yeah, it's the Flesh of Kerr card. <laughs> what? <laughs> nice. Oh, this is all going to work so perfectly together. Well, you know what? That doesn't affect me because I can't read. So there you go. <laughs> Are you Leah okay. Michelle? Yes. Uh, okay. Well, last we left our heroes. Deep beneath the streets of Darcy Street. In the sewers and the hidden chambers of Cassius the Beggar Prince. Underneath those hidden chambers in the sanctum, the hidden cell where Lawrence Booker Green has been in hiding ever since the... Army of the Eclipse bombed Mercury City Hospital specifically to kill him months ago. Our heroes have learned of the plot to bring the dead world Atropus to Yord so that it, all life could be extinguished and replaced with undeath to feed the endless appetite of the dead god. There are still multiple ways that this could happen. There's a loose angel seeking out the Pyramid of the Last Pharaoh an artifact which can raise a legion of the dead. And if that's allowed to happen, 
If a mass casualty event occurs, Atropus will become hurtling towards this world. But that is not the only person who's after this, that artifact. The Omelons are also besieging the city of the last pharaoh. And they've been known to dabble in the occult themselves. Second, uh, any other mass casualty event could also do the job, or an incredibly powerful source of evil. Yes? I have a question. Mm -hmm. On the scale of one to hi, Atropus, uh, what does a war such as uh, the Commonwealth entering the current conflict with the Omelons, does that, would that count? Uh, war wouldn't necessarily count. No, because it's not localized as much, right? Right. It, it would have to be like a truly huge battle or a city blowing up. That would do it. Ooh, like it, it would okay. have to be a, a, a massive, massive, a single battle where like 100,000 people die in the span of a day or something along those lines. I see. It's, it's not, you know, this, this isn't an exact science, but it would have to be an absolutely enormous loss of life in a short period of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Or okay. a poorly placed volcano. Oh, oh God, I forgot. Oh, don't volcano. say that. Gosh. T no, Tim isn't giving me ideas. Tim just sees the script. <laughs> you, you have one year. You gave us a whole year to prepare for this. This is not, I, no, this is I not told, fair. I didn't tell you that. <laughs> the Dungeon Master didn't tell you that. Someone in this world told you that. Mm. And it was true mm. at that time. And now you've learned more information. Because Lawrence Booker Green has informed them of the threat of Atropus, for Lawrence Booker Green is an archivist with approximate knowledge of many things. But as our heroes lurk down here in the sewers beneath Darcy Street, and the rains begin to intensify and thunder cracks overhead, Asena has learned bits and pieces of the mystery of her past, as she is not Lawrence's daughter but he is responsible for her creation for her existence for her sentience it's very strange hara asena and john are left with the decision of what to do now lawrence has told them that there are people scrying for him searching for him and that the only reason he's been able to escape from them so far so long is by hiding here and making a pact with cassius what do our heroes want to do by the way, just to clarify, uh, mm -hmm. he keeps saying like he's using them, they. Who mm -hmm. is looking for him? Because it sounds like we've killed everyone who was looking for them. And now they've gone on further by saying that the agents that could possibly be mm -hmm. looking for them are all dead in Northport. So who exactly, aside from us, is looking for him? Caster can scry. And Caster came back and he's still under Sinopulker's control. All right, so you're worried about Caster? Seriously? Well, yeah, Caster has access to information. And the dry man, Reaver, is still under Senapulco's authority. He doesn't want to kill me, but he absolutely can, and he has to obey Senapulco to a degree. It, absolutely, but it, okay, so it almost seems like if we were, well, actually, we should probably speak about this elsewhere that isn't, uh, you know, going to cover us in water. Uh, should we leave? Where will we go? Wow, we did offer wounds, but there's also space. You want to buy a ticket to the museum? <laughs> Short term or long term? Oh, that depends entirely on Asena. What? We could, you know, head to the Astral, and link up with Rocco, and be back here in two shakes. And by two shakes, I mean anywhere between, you know, six to twelve hours. You got magic? Or just teleport us somewhere. Do you have a teleportation circle? E well, yes. Where does Do it go? you have one here? He looks down at the binding circle and he says, not yet. Yeah, by the way, what is that for? Is that just where you gather knowledge or what? We have conversations from time to time. I extract information, learn more about the outside world, learn more about is the Is that permanent? Do they stay there forever? Or do we interrupt no, you in the middle I, of something? I cycle them out. So we could return to this portal here? No, because I haven't been here for a year. Which is how long it takes to create a new teleportation circle. To establish... So where could we go? Well, what teleportation circles do you have? It's off-world! I mean, we're not going to be able to come back here easily, is the thing. Uh, he looks at Asena, 
whose fists were glowing a moment ago, says, Can I trust you to keep me safe? Yeah, I mean, we're not going to let anyone else kill you. <laughs> the, uh, the specific phrasing has not gone unnoticed, but he'll tilt his head and... All right. Chester moves up to Booker and uh, just kind of does that cat thing where they walk between your legs, almost tripping you up and then kind of mm -hmm. nuzzling up against the side of your foot. For a moment, I forgot that Chester's real now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right. Um, he looks around at all of his... Also, books. Hara's here. Been here the whole time. Yeah, Hara was sitting there, actually, <laughs> when, when she talks to uh, Asena, and in her own head, she's like, oh, yeah, sure. The punchy girl will take care of you. The dragon doesn't have anything to do with this. <laughs> but, you know, that sounds like a somebody else problem. Did she say that to herself? Or? Yeah, she didn't say that out loud. She's just like, what is going on right now? She's just watching the show. <laughs> She loves the uh, the whole good punch, bad punch routine. Yeah. Anyways, he looks around at this chamber, goes, okay. And he starts packing. Do you happen to have one of these? And John takes out his uh, briefcase. He stares at it for a moment. No. Okay, well, start getting your things set up, and if you'd like, I can transport the bulk of this room, just taking only what is truly necessary. Just the books, and he points over at the table full of reagents, some of the harder to get over there. Okay, very Everything good. Everything else I can carry. Aside from the rugs, are there any, like, sacks or anything that would be easy to wrap his belongings up in to where it'd be easy to recover? Hmm... Yeah, there's a couple of burlap sacks lying around with potatoes Perfect. written on them. Just potatoes, no brand, no destination, just potatoes. John looks inside the bags. Are there potatoes in the bags? There are no potatoes in the bag. Does it reek of old potato? No, it's been sanitized through prestidigitation. Very nice. Okay, John starts loading up anything that uh, mm -hmm. Green begins putting together and starts just whoop, dropping it into Spellbook. Spellbook. Mm -hmm. Spellbook. Tome of Dark Forbidden Knowledge. Journal, scr spell scroll, spell scroll, other John's tome of dark like, forbidden knowledge. It's like it, it's like somebody went to the Obsidian Spire and checked out a few books and racked up some some diabolical uh, late fees. He's got some good stuff here. <laughs> John, uh, hey, um, you wouldn't mind if I could take a look at some of those, would you? Well. Under normal circumstances, he might object, but chat just played the streamless card, Kiss of Corruption. A dark Ooh. force whispers to somebody in the party. Ooh. Oh, no. And so, uh, a particular book falls out, uh, written in Infernal script, uh, and it's a book on wizardly magic. Interesting. I'm interesting, interesting. Uh... John does not put that one in the burlap sacks. Okay. Does he palm it or does he just put it in separately? Just, just puts it, but he puts it in a different portion of the briefcase. Not, not mm -hmm. trying to seem like he's being very obvious about taking it, but, uh, okay. Yeah. John's, John's going to go ahead and put that somewhere where he can just take a look before he returns it back All to right. uh, Booker. Make a note of that. Make a note of that. Um, okay. He continues to pack things up. What is Asena doing as Lawrence is like stacking things in order, wrapping piles of books in twine so that they won't come apart and then loading them in? Um, she's walked over to this table where there it seems like there's a lot of stuff here. Mm hmm What 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 about all of these 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 pens and and this the pens? I don't know what's on what's on the table here? Uh, there's a whole bunch of vials of different chemicals, some little jars with uh, ground up things in them and labels, uh, Pegasus blood, um, demon blood. These all tears. look very. We we don't we actually we don't need any of this. It's very hard to replace. 
Asena's going to go look for some shiny things. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> let's see. You find a obsidian mirror. So it, it's, a, it's a mirror that slides in and out of a golden case, a gold-covered case, uh, inscribed with images of the stars, and it's on a hinge, so this plate of obsidian comes out, and you can just barely see yourself in the dark glass, dark volcanic glass. Is this important? Yes, yes, that's my scrying focus. Very expensive. Expensive? Yes. Also what hard to replace. This, what is a scrying focus? She's like <laughs> looking at herself in it. It lets me see things from afar. Hmm. So I've kept tabs on some of the things going on while I've been down here. Not everything. I try to avoid looking after anybody who might look back. Like you. You could just spy on people? Mm-hmm. You never spied on me? I can't spy back. Hmm. I, um... I have my own pact with Santa Polker. What? Before we even came here, I went against our group and helped someone escape. Someone who only joined us to get revenge and to destroy Senapulker in the first place. And I helped her escape. And the only way that I was surviving that was by binding my soul to Senapulker if I ever die. And if that ever happened, all my knowledge, all my memories would be its. So in the event that that ever happened, I didn't want you to be in any of my memories. Well, that's kind of nice. So don't let me die. <laughs> <laughs> you won't die. Okay. He gingerly kind of slides into the desk behind you and starts grabbing some of those like really dangerous, rare components and shuffles them over to John very carefully. Diamond dust. Some onyx strips some carved ivory powerful spell components that kind of stuff john has the side pockets he has the main body of the mm -hmm. uh briefcase that acts like a bag of holding plus but then he also has the small little uh mini haversack style uh, on the other side of the case that mm -hmm. are smaller pocket dimensions that he goes nice. ahead and throws nice. those into so easier to recover all right very nice Okay, so um, with everything packed up, with the rain continuing, you can hear the water flowing faster and faster down below. This is the biggest rainstorm they've had since Mr. Lowe got whacked. Um, what would a lot of you like to do? There's only one way in and one way out, and it's up a chute. Well, I mean, technically, there's more than one way out, but we don't really want to go the other way. Mm -hmm. I've mapped it out. Should be relatively safe if... Um, if we go, well, I don't know if it's safe anymore, but it leads out to the ocean eventually. Uh, no, we have business we need to resolve with Cassia, so we can easily go back the way we came and just abscond from this place. Okay. Um, Did you want to lock the door on the way out? Also, I think Tiny's going to have to stay here. Unless you have some kind of magical device with which to hide their true presence. Right. Let me let me deal with this. He walks over to the shadow demon. And he gets a cold look over his face. And he speaks a single word. A word that echoes with divine light. And as it emerges from his mouth, the room shudders with thunder and the sound of trumpets. The shadow demon screams as it melts away, as if blasted by an invisible burning wind. 
Oh my. Did you just kill him? No. But it wishes it was dead. <laughs> kind of sounds like that. <laughs> we have a live we have live fully Ex- sound effects. Yeah, yeah. Production value is way up. And then he he grabs the stone, the rock that he was carrying. And he looks at the elemental and says, destroy it all. And walks out the door. And the elemental just looks at the two of you. Walks over to the wall. Walks over to the pillar in the corner. And just grabs it and starts going. (coughs) And the room begins to tremble as uh, Lawrence exits. Okay. Uh, yeah, we very quickly make our way out of this place. <laughs> I guess we aren't coming back. Is there anything, by the way, in that circle that is recoverable? No. The com- no. the magic components were already used. And if he'd stayed okay. here for a whole year and kept casting magic circle, uh, teleport circle every single day, it would have become a permanent teleportable circle. Yeah, unfortunate. Uh, but, you know, screw that. He's leaving. He's going to go live on the outside again. Glorious. Do you have a plan for going up the slick shoot? Uh, yeah. We have a Sena. That's fair. Where's you, where was your business? My my business. Yes, oh, he's you, not talking to me. No, you said with Cassius, right? Yes. Uh, he's after a boy, a ward in our charge, found a better life, and he's asking for some kind of recompense. And this is relevant to you? It's important, yes. Okay. That's a friend. Your desired outcome? Would be that Cassius leave the boy alone and quit harassing the school of Donahue. Okay. He reaches out with his hands for both of you and gestures towards Hara. Hara's, again, kind of just along for the ride, listening to the sounds of the elemental in the other room, absolutely knocking things down as everything shudders and the water continues to rise. She shrugs. She's standing us opposite, and she's going to grab your hands. Are you going to grab Lawrence's hands? Yep. Cool. Uh, Dimension door, level six. Oh, very good. (laughs) He teleports you, all of you, and I need to make sure that I grab him in this, and Chester comes along because familiars get free tickets. Yay. (laughs) He's got a ticket to ride. And he don't care. My kitty don't care. And then you are all teleported back up to the throne of Cassius, who is staring down into the chute down below (laughs) uh, and freaking out. By the way, is Slakura still gone or here? Or where is Slakura? Slakura returned to the world of the bloom. Just making sure. Just Just summon battle over Pokemon back in the ball. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I was just reminded by seeing their uh, their stout little form here. (laughs) Oh my god, Slakura has been summoned. (laughs) What's wrong? Wait, is Slakura a boy or a girl? Hey, what's wrong? Slakura, is, is is Billy trapped in a well in Yokai again? <laughs> oh, it was that bad? Oh my gosh, I will wait. I'm gonna miss that thing. When did Slakura start sounding like Animal Crossing? <laughs> but yeah, Slakura, well, it's a good thing that you miss him because he's here. <laughs> whose head was Slakura wrapped around earlier? Asena's. Mine. Okay. So you you teleport you dimension door here and you hear a happy sound from the the shadows above <laughs> back over your head. Oh god. And then slides onto your shoulder. Hey, hey guy. You want to come to space? <laughs> can he come with us? I don't know, can he? I'm honestly surprised he was able to come here in the first place. Yeah, how are you doing that? I don't look at me. He's your familiar. No, I just I thought he spoke common. I don't know. <laughs> I think he speaks anime. <laughs> Is Lakora supposed to speak common? <laughs> yeah. 
Oh yeah, it totally does. I've been doing these weird little animal noises the entire time. So we're gonna do the droid what thing. What is cute, bro? We're gonna yeah. do the droid thing where whenever I, that's what you hear, but you totally understand it, right? Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. The bond between a blossom spirit and its companion is unbreakable. Not even worlds can keep us apart and our friendship, except Aww. when they do. That's adorable. Well, just to keep you up to date, we're gonna go to space. Um, so hopefully you can make the journey. If not, I'll see you when I see you. <laughs> If we're going I'd soon, like to, sure. I'd like to test something. Okay. Uh, Slakora, here, uh, have this. And John is going to give Slakora exactly one glow stick. Uh, keep this within your form what? and don't let anyone take it. I want to find out when next we see you, after you've left, if that will come with you again. And if we have a way of being able to... <laughs> Is John going to use Slakura as like uh, look, I, an extra-dimensional pocket? Just hold I'm on not to safe, saying safe I'm not saying that that's going to be what you know is the end goal. But John's just running. It's just a test. You know, everything is science <laughs> if you write it down. And so John's just doing some science. That's all. Oh man. Anyways, as all of this conversation is happening, Cassius is just over the shoot, which clo like the it, he's sitting on the throne again, and he's just looking around at all of you, and he looks at Lawrence with horror on his face and then looks away from him don't worry and John puts a hand on the beggar prince's shoulder your secret is safe with us but so too is extra we have an understanding I would assume He looks over at Lawrence for a moment, then puts his eyes away. Right. Kid seems happy. Doing great. And that's Love exactly school. what you wanted. Mm -hmm. well, from the beginning, the whole time. Nothing but the best for mine. Me and mine. Yep. Yep. Off he goes. However, while you were such a, an excellent keeper of our young friend, I have a gift for you. And John is going to give the beggar prince a large jag jaguar mask. Sorry. No. It's not a mask. And he's going to give him an obsidian mask, a jade jaguar, and a key that looks like a double eagle. Matt, are those the originals? No, those are the fakes. Okay, okay, all right, just checking. But he's not passing them off as fakes. Right, yeah, yeah, These yeah. These are more impressive than money and are going to be more useful to your organization in the coming days. Utilize these artifacts from the jungles of Zoquia. Claim them as your own and use them to assert your power here. A new age is dawning upon Northport, and you must take your seat at the table, Cassius. Just remember who helped put you there. Roll deception, please. I do this thing. And because I'm going to anyway, I'm going to add a deduction dice to this. Understandable. Have a nice day. Well, that's a natural one. Um... Let's just say I'm not holding on to that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and use one of the lovely inspirations that I got. Okay. And none of those are fresh, by the way. Chad hasn't given you any today, as far as I can tell. Uh, I got two today. No, oh, those both went to uh, Asana, did they not? Uh, I got at least one. I've been marking down the ones that I've been getting. Have you been clearing them from the queue? I have not. Okay, because I didn't see any in the queue for you. I got a stream loot. For me i'm pretty sure both of those were you know what consult consult the list consult the list inspiration oh yeah one for your hand yep you're good you're good yeah okay good. we'll have a nice day anyway um, and there's another one that just got played so you know there we go okay perfect it all came out in the wash all right and uh, i'm gonna go ahead and uh, roll that again if you don't mind mm, don't uh, we're mind. gonna go ahead and keep the first plus eight so here comes deception mm -hmm. please be better than a one that's much better than a one 27. 27. Okay. Well, I mean, your boy, the bigger princes are pretty good. Inside check. Go for it. 20. Dirty 20. But not that good. 
Pretty good. All right. Pretty good. Uh, and you have been given disadvantage for Jaguars. <laughs> hey, That's understandable. Fair. I'm here for it. All right. Um, so he looks greedily at these artifacts with a sense of, of uh, awe and eagerness caught up in this story you're spinning. I think you've made an impact. Oh, also, Gnomes, looks like you got this event as well. When did that happen? Uh, you, your friend uh, Gnome. Uh, you know, a, a gnome from your past came back oh, to the Oh, understandable. Have a nice day. <laughs> I'm not using it on that role. You already beat me on that role. Yeah, All yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've given um, Cassius these fake artifacts from your last expedition to Zolquia. Yes. And Lawrence is just looking at Cassius and doesn't say a thing. Uh, but remember that infernal mark that I told you that is on Cassius? You see it glow under his shirt for a moment and sort of hisses and he winces. Ooh, and a similar mark glows underneath Lawrence's vest. And, and then he does stops. not wince. Correct. He no-sells it. Did you, nice. uh, Lawrence will say, did we, you have any further business? Tom looks to Asena, looks to Hara. I think we got what we were coming here for, and then some. Hara gives Cassius the bye-bye <laughs> with one hand. Don turns to leave. Okay. Asena, you leaving? Uh, y y yes. Where are we going? To the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. <laughs> We're going to the museum. Is that Lawrence? <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a meme. It's a meme. Lawrence, as it turns out, oh. is an avid communist. Um, <laughs> no, but seriously, where, like, as you're walking away, all looking cool, Hara leans over and says, but seriously, where are we going? And John turns and smiles. We're going to go uh, take a look at the museum again. Mm. You're not planning on doing that thing now, the the big thing, just oh, the normal. And he him. points at he points at a scene of the normal thing. Uh, no, the oh no, <sighs> okay, no, 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 no. We're just getting thing? you somewhere safe. Great. So the she points at a scene again. The the thing. Yes. Great. Uh, by the way, though, while we're in routes, we probably should start making plans, and I want to be out of earshot before we start, you know, okay. talking cool. about any of this. Uh, seeing Asena looking a little bit confused, Hara leans over and says, we're going to use the portal. You're going to send us to the astral plane. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that part. I just don't know what, like, the, the bigger... We'll talk about part. that when we're in a safe location. We'll ex I'll explain. Okay. Okay. It's a Senepulker plan. Oh, the bigger one. Right. Yes. I got it now. All right. How are you getting? Uh, so as the sewer levels continue to rise, as rain just pours down and ominous thunder crackles far above, how are you planning? Uh, are you just going to go ahead and wind your way up to the streets? And then from there, you are actually not that far from the museum. Let's see if I can pull up the map real quick and just get us a, a bead on how far you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give us right. give us a coolio heads up. North port. Oh yeah, we're a half skip and a jump. That's not bad at all. That is not bad at all. So that's only I mean it's it's more than half a mile. Um, but it's yeah, yeah. it's not a hard cab ride. This late at night, a lot of cabbies. No, you can get a cabbie around. Wait, here. how late at night is it? I thought it was like daytime when we came out here. What well, you know? It's always a dark and stormy night. I always forget. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, sun get... doesn't rise here. Exactly. Uh, it does, just not when we're on camera. <laughs> so, do you want to just hail a cab? Yeah, but uh, yes, yes. John has a plan for that. Yes, let's hail a cab. We can. Uh, Hara, are you coming too? You might be, I think you might want to be a part of this conversation. It seems You'll relevant. be gone just for a bit. We'll, we'll get It'll you back as soon as we can. It'll be difficult to run my school if, yes, the this world is, comes this to is, an end. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, this is relevant. So all four of you 
five, including Chester, cram into the back of a car? Yes. Okay. And uh, you're going to have the little sliding thing shut so that you can talk amongst yourselves or you're going to use mental communication because Hara has message. What's the plan? Yes. Uh, well, if they want to use mental communication, we can do that too. John is going to be using uh, his silent image spell in order to uh, create that obfuscating static that he likes to put. So we'll close well, the latch. Remember, the image is silent. It doesn't block sound. Oh, wait. Is it silent image? Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have like a minor image. Hold on a second. Let me just confirm here. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you can't do it hard, yeah. you're okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, it's uh. Oh, that's right. This one is this one is silent image. Shoot. Well, mm. Hara does it. She has your magic now. Yeah, thank you. Let her let her make the obfuscating. Right. Hara uh, puts sound. activates the cone of silence in the back seat, and we'll go ahead and carry on the conversation. I'm a neutered wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Getting by on my pact with a infernal abomination. Oh. So the plan. So you heard what we were talking about in there, Hara. Uh, mm -hmm. We need to make sure that we can, in order to save the people of Yord, we have to end Senefolker. We're either going to end Senefolker by getting together a, a gallant group of heroes to go down there and destroy everything and silence the cry of this godling. Or we can try and just send it somewhere that isn't us. I have some options. Uh, Zelzash, the planet that we... Uh, the reveal. Yeah, I remember Zelzash. Yes. Uh, Frozen that world is a, nearly dead. She says over to Asena. And would be a very, uh, considering the worlds that we've been, we've we've made ourselves uh, known across. That would likely be a pretty good spot. Uh, we would basically be just sicking an evil dictator upon an evil dictator and letting them, you know, battle it out. Slakura, by the way, is pressed up slime style against the window and just <laughs> watching everything going by. <laughs> Carry on. Uh, and we could, with the assistance of our, our friends, the pilgrims, we could very likely uh, find a way to take anyone from that world that does not want to be there when Ground Zero occurs. And kind of, I'm, I can't think of the word, not escorts, uh, when you're saving people going down on a dying Evacuate. Ship. Thank you. We can evacuate the people of Zelzash that uh, don't want to take part in this terrible conflict. Another option, speaking of uh, higher space, we could get the pilgrims together, charter a ship, and find the homeworlds of the Illithids that have plagued that entire star system and send Atropus there. <laughs> All right, chuckles. There's a great many evils in this world, and I think that we're the kind of people who can send them upon each other. Why have them prey upon the masses of goodly creatures that seek to only make their way in the world when we can have these terrible forces fight one another instead? Hmm. Asena, uh, what are your thoughts? Well, I could see why John would want to do that and keep his hands clean from having to kill all the other bad people, too. That's a nice, tidy bonus, that's sure. I didn't mean it in a bad way. Just We like, could also... Oh, go ahead. Uh, you guys seem to struggle with like a lot of guilt over bad things. He does. I would just rather not kill something unless it had to be killed, and most things don't need to be killed. Do the undead really what? count, though? Okay, granted. Although it depends on what kind of undead. Some of them merely wish to prolong their inevitable demise in order to gather knowledge, and uh, they don't seek to hurt anyone. Mm. But monsters, certainly. Beings that were bred for destruction, war, or that seek to subjugate other races and bring them into slavery and servitude. Yeah, I, I don't mind squashing that kind of a nuisance on society. Am I undead? Lawrence says mm. no. He immediately speaks up and says no. Oh, there you go. Straight from the proverbial gift horse. What's, what's, what's the difference? The undead are not alive. Their physiological functions do not continue, and they are animated by necrotic energy. Huh. Bad. 
you are a living being with a soul. Just not the soul I'm supposed to have. Right. Huh. Well, that's good. Then I guess there's not an ethics question of whether we should kill the undead or not. I mean, there is a question. And the answer is usually yes. I'm just um, not a hypocrite. <laughs> <laughs> a Sena will kill anyone, regardless of their uh, creed, uh, faith, or any other extenuating Hara, circumstances. Hara says, yes, actually, that was is what I was going to bring up. I get the idea of using this dead planet as a cat's paw, John. It could be quite useful. Um, but does anyone else remember when Asena punched a genetically engineered godling in the face? On Ashen. Okay. The You'll have to remind me. Did that go poorly? Oh, the Mars spawn. No, we destroyed it. Yes. We conquered it. She has a point. I mean, we could just kill it. That was been the plan all along. And plus, it deserves, it, it deserves to die for eating, well, not her, but her. And countless others. It ate maybe me. Lawrence adds That's true. that would uh, that would alter my condition as well. You'd be free. Yes. Well, Leave what the judgment happened? of my soul up to the gods instead of uh, that thing. Because right now, whenever you die, mm -hmm. he gets all your stuff. Mm -hmm. Even if it exists on another world mm -hmm. and who's to say they're not just gonna bring him back here there's the advantage Hara points out of being able to wipe out incredibly powerful threats with an incredibly powerful force I understand the appeal of that there's just the, the slight hiccup of um, it's a god and not a Halfway. Oh, it is it's literally a halfway god, but the Marspawn abomination was a was a divine being in name only. It did not have the staying power that most others of its ilk do. And I would assume Senebulker is not going to be a walk in the park. Isn't to say that we can't do it. I mean, just between the four of us, we make a pretty a pretty powerful group. But that's that's the point, though, Hara. We would need to make sure that we have your buy-in on this. I don't think that Asena and I would be able to conquer such a daunting task on our own. We would need assistance of many, including yourself. There's a possibility that your school could lose its headmistress if the worst were to happen. Well, if a dead planet comes and transforms all of my students into slavering abominations, I've lost my school too, right? That's very true. They are my students. Their protection is my responsibility. And to that point, Mr. Green, you brought up a very good point. The creatures that work for Senna Volker, those that aren't its literal thralls, and even those that are, don't necessarily want to work for it. And even though they must follow their directives, I'm assuming, like all reasoning, thinking creatures, these are not constructs, we would be able to somewhat reason with them. I wonder... If we would be able to have you meet up with your former associates and plant the idea that they could, at a pivotal moment, turn on their master when we come to destroy it. That might be possible. That would be much easier. Meet, contact, yes. And... At that moment, you can hear the radio from the front, for Hara has set this up to be one way. Sound gets nice. in, it doesn't get out. This just in! Mere moments ago, a remote monitoring station in the jungles of Zolkuya reported unprecedented seismic activity. A volcano long since thought extinct near the sunken circle of Tlaikalal erupted violently. Magma stones and poisonous fumes rush out towards outlying villages. Evacuation is underway, but conservationists fear these ancient sites of key heritage have been lost. Re 
reports that an enormous face appeared in the ash cloud have been dismissed outright, especially comparisons between the fiery outline of the eruption and the wrathful visage of the villain known only as Ralzamon, Master of the Unknown. Goody. You've got to be kidding me. Okay, can we just all say, by the way, if we're heading to Zokia to destroy Senefulker, I want to knock Ralzamon off along the way, because I'm very, very tired. John, isn't one of the pieces of the Flesh of Core buried at the Sunken Circle of Tlaikala? You know, it, it is, actually. <laughs> and that's in the path of this volcanic eruption. Very true. That could be a problem. How so? Well, it depends on what happens to it. Buried in lava, good. Um, guardians destroyed, bad. Do you think that the lava pool would destroy the ancient spirit that guards it? If the spirit is tied to the structure... I see what you're saying now. Yep, you're right. That vessel... Uh, ooh, yeah. Good point. So we have a vampire seeking a magical weapon of mass destruction in Kemet. And one of the pieces of the flesh of Kur is in peril because Ralzmon blew up a mountain. Well then, it sounds as though we need to either divide and conquer or very quickly see to these problems and stomp them out. To that point, Hara and Green, I think, at least temporarily, we need to uh, see about changing our own name. We've had a large discussion about various naming conventions today, and I think going forward, in order to save the planet of Yord from its doomed fate, One Punch is going to have to add a couple new members, at least for a time. All right, but only on a temporary basis, Hara says. I teach the heroes with their nicknames. I don't do the nicknames. And you? What? I mean, you've come this far. How is this a priority? The name. Uh, well, we the names. I'm going. I'm not going to let Atropus eat this world. I'm not. Going oh to no! Let I, I'm not leaving yes. the name to you. You, you're terrible with names. No, no, I'll come up with it. I need you. <laughs> I need your buy-in. I'm just making sure that yes. you're actually going to. Yes. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Great. I'm out now. I'm exposed. I've left my my sanctuary. It's either either Cenobulker goes or I do. That's but the only have... safe house you had. They found the rest of them. Oh, shoot. But you have friends now. You're more powerful with us than you ever were hiding in those holes. So what are we going to do? Well, I think we're we need to... make oh. a name. <laughs> Hara and Lawrence look at each other, and then they both look at Asena. Hara is doing the... Uh, and Lawrence is like... And Slakura bounces up. Mom! <laughs> Lawrence, you yourself should know, names are very powerful things. It's important. Which is why not having one can help. If this is important to you, I... Go ahead. Ara says, all right, John, what do you got? Actually, Asena, do you have any ideas? No. All I know is One Punch sounds dumb. <laughs> Imagine a hero called One Punch. She, uh, Hara is visibly disappointed and turns to, all right, John, what, what do you have? Oh, well, I mean, no need to give me a little more than just a cab ride to be able to find something as amazing as we had with One Two Punch. Now, this is going to take some time to figure out, but don't worry. I'm getting Magical a pen! That doesn't work. But I like where your head's at, Asena. Keep keep going with that line of logic. <laughs> Slakura blinks at you, and as it does, the glow stick inside. Boink, boink. <laughs> the glowy group of glow sticks. Yeah. The other two shake their heads. Yeah, I'm not certain about that one. In any case, while we come up with the name that our group will be known as, as we attempt to save this planet and all it's in all the people within. We're going to need to get a plane ticket. I thought we were going to be able to head to space 
to plot our next move, but you're right, Hara. We have to stop what's coming, and we need to decide if we wish to go to Zokia, <sighs> save the peace occur from destruction and possible a vampire is likely seeking it, which is why it went there. The well, other the vampire, vampire, they have it. Don't they have him in custody? Her in custody? Oh, you're right. Gosh, why yes. do I keep thinking they have Scott? Okay, we should because, take care because of that while we're the, here. No, because Natalie planted a false trail. If it wasn't for the fact that we That's had Draken right. in our pocket, That's Natalie right. bought a ticket to Zolquia, but then took uh, a private flight to Kemet. Very good. Very you good. saw and through it, but be... it keeps getting you. <laughs> we, we should then verily head back to Department 7. We can take care of Thompson here while we're in town, and then we need to decide if we're going to head to the Zolquian jungle to save the flesh of Kur, or if we head to Kemet, I think Kemet is the key, considering we know there's a volcano. We know that it's attempting to move its way through the lands, and it could be that Ralzaman is using it to try to destroy the site where the Flesh of Kur belongs, although I don't think so. I think that's probably more so happenstance than anything else. What say you? All of you. Lawrence, because I still can't believe the Flesh of Kur is involved in all of this. Oh, right. Yeah, we didn't really address that. Uh, hi, John Carmichael, ex-wizard, uh, keeper of the Flesh of Kur. Uh, I've been hiding it across various worlds along the multiverse, and I've only recently discovered that, that was probably a bad idea. And we now have found out that there are numerous elder evils that are making their way across the cosmos in order to locate and find these pieces of cursed flesh in order to supercharge their already immense powers. John. Flesh of Kur could be used as a beacon to hail Atropos. It could accomplish the exact same thing. Very true. Oh, goodness. Are we going to have to go back to every single world we've ever been on and require all these pieces? Oh, how many are? Oh, you know what? One world at a time. I have a list. I have a list. It's less than a dozen. But... Less? Oh, my God. But only just. Okay, if they somehow figure out that it's there or get their hands on it, they can absolutely use it to summon Atropos. And if Natalie Adams gets her hands on the the funerary pyramid of the last pharaoh or these Omelons grab it and use it in, in, for their own purposes, either of those could be a mass casualty event, which would summon you know, Atropos. But only one of them, our enemies know, is in play. I say we take care of that first and then rush our way back to Zokia. Unless you'd like to split up, maybe... Asayan and I can head to Kemet, and the two of you can make your way to Zokia and recover the piece of the flesh of Kor. Uh, Hara thinks about it and says, I might need to... Might need a little bit more than that. How do you mean? I just might want to bring along some additional muscle. Oh! Okay. Uh, you should consider got... it as well. I know some people. You know mm -hmm. some people. Mm -hmm. We have our contacts. Do you think we have enough time to go off-world, or should we keep it here with Inyord? Who knows? Who knows? It's been... I mean, we, we learned about uh, Draken de Vry and losing track of Natalie Adams, what, today? Yesterday? Yes. So, it completely depends. She... Natalie crashed at the no-man's land of the Omelon Front, and she's a vampire in the desert she could have already perished in the sun by now or it's going to take her some time to get there unless she charmed her way into somebody's vehicle and stole that and could be on her way as we speak but even then they'd need somebody who could perform the rights and natalie can't perform the rights i don't think just being a vampire spawn who's good with money is not good enough to perform the rights so they need somebody who can perform the rights so they would need to bring someone there who is capable or they need to or transport find it. someone or, there. Or, or find someone there or transport it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So, maybe a day, I think? A day? You know, Aran, hmm. you have an entire school filled with incredibly capable individuals. I was wondering where you were going to find help. I know where I'm going to find help. You know... I've heard tell that across Northport, there's been various heroes, small little groups that have mm -hmm. been 
popping up, having, I can only assume, following in the footsteps of the hero of Northport. They're a terrible influence on my students, yes. But useful. But send them to their deaths? Oh, we wouldn't be sending them to their deaths. We'd be fighting there right alongside them. <sighs> All right, I'll see if I can work something out. I think you should go off world or hire Chester or Ian Fletcher or one of those. Oh, that was another idea as well. Yes. Yeah. No, I'll. I'll see about the, the wonder crew and the other groups that are running around in the action bunch. If I have to. Ew. Maybe one of them but... will die while we're there. Who knows? <laughs> Lawrence looks over at her like, oh, all right. But first and foremost, we need to go to department seven. Not only will we be able to eliminate one of our targets there, but we may be able to receive some assistance. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, you're heading to the museum still. What Do you want to tell the cabbie to turn around and go somewhere else? Yeah, because I feel like we're not going to be heading uh, into space anymore. Okay. I mean, you can go to space if you want to hire off-world help for this mission. But otherwise, you know, you can not do that. Um, do you want to tell him to go to Department 7? Or go to the McCulloch's, the McCulloch building? Yeah, I mean, Department 7's all the way across freaking town, but we can do it that. It is, it is. So I guess yeah. it was just safe enough to talk inside this cab. <laughs> it seems so. All right. Well, I think I think developments on the news helped uh, reinforce that uh, that strategy. We can go to space later, Asana. Don't worry. We might still. Mm. Who knows? Yeah, uh, John's gonna go ahead and open and stick his head past the uh, the staticky. Hey, uh, Cabby, apologies. Uh, we've decided we do not want to go to the museum anymore. It is a silly place. Uh, if you could go ahead and just take us to the McCulloch Building instead. All right, it's going to be more fair. He just taps the meter and turns around and starts taking you in that direction. At which point... John should have ahead. money. I think John has money here. Yeah. I have a wealth score of 14. So yeah, you've totally got the money. This isn't like an okay. in-game effect. This is just, you've got it, but it's yeah, going to yeah, yeah. cost you. Oh, yeah. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right. Um, you pass by Christoph Cemetery. You hear a commotion. Not that beep. Ignore that. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> you hear screaming and sirens and uh, energy blasts. Oh. No. Mm hmm. And it's What's coming going on? from Kristoff Cemetery. Is that the place that we just came from this morning? Or, yeah, this morning? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay, uh, wait a minute. Uh, one more stop, please, Cavi. Meter runs while I stop, and he pulls up uh, as a tombstone goes flying over the car and smashes into a bus stop on the other side of the street. The Cavi just parks it, taps the meter, it's still running. We abscond from the cab for now. Anything uh, gets broken, do not leave. it costs extra. We'll see about that. <laughs> Maybe we have to invest in a private driver. Away. Would be a pretty good idea. This isn't uh, related to uh, digging up foster talent, isn't it? Goodness, I hope, I hope not. <laughs> That'd be real funny, wouldn't it? Uh, I got this map lying around here somewhere. Here it is. Okay, cool. Here we go. Please stand by for the Autumn Cemetery map. Ooh, cemetery. And John and Chester and Slakura and Hara and Lawrence Booker Green. Heck yeah. Man, and you got the, some firepower. And the action team. And the action team. And the mechanical Jump minions drop. of Dr. Zorby. <laughs> destroy, destroy. Destroy. Why are we here? <laughs> because you heard the action bunch blowing stuff up. I'm like, why are they here? 
All right, give me one sec. Uh, this situation just got a little bit. This sends the case in a whole new direction. Oh my! All right, we got alacrity, we got bulk, we got firepower, and we've got skull. What? That's the members of the action team. Oh, and yeah. a few other special guest stars today before we even get to the mechanical minions of Dr. Zorbius. Ooh, guest stars. I love guest stars. One moment, please. Okay. We now take our heroes to the Autumn Cemetery. Oh no. Where a battle is underway, citizens flee as zombies make their way down the steps. And the action bunch is in position, fighting back. Bulk and Skull are on the front line, brawling with them. Alacrity is zipping through between them, trying to trip them. And Firepower is just... <laughs> what would a lot of you like to do? Do you think they need our help? Uh, well... That These depends. are the town's greatest heroes. <laughs> well, I mean, they're the most well-known heroes within the city of Northport, that's for certain. But this could actually be, uh, be a good boon for us. If we can assist them here and then have them escort us back to Department 7. These are the lackeys of Hank McCarthy. We could use them to get in. Do you want to intercede or no? Is there anyone else here other than the action squad? No, nobody else is here. The action bunch is here. Um, and oh, the action bunch, my apologies. Yeah, the action bunch. There actually is a superhero group called the action squad somewhere out there in the in our world. <laughs> so I had to rebrand them for copyright reasons. <laughs> um, but yeah, there are some fleeing civilians, but nobody else. Eh, there's not that many. I could have this rounded up in a minute. Yeah. You know what? Why not? Let's go ahead and just... Quick adventure. Uh, in and out. 20 yeah, minutes. In and out. 20 minutes. Oh, God. No way this could go wrong. <laughs> oh, hey, look. We can we can have Sakura jump on top of Asana's head now. We can. Roll for initiative. Yes. It's been so long. We literally I had crave, a fight last session. <laughs> I crave death. Okay, well, I was I I have disadvantage, but it doesn't get lower than a one, so. <laughs> oh, shoot. And zombies suck at this. All right, Asena, wait, why cold fanatic go away? You 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 aren't here. Be gone. Cassius, you're also in my initiative order. Get out of here. I have I have leftovers from last time. I apologize. Uh, you get out of here. You get out of here. John, what did you roll? Uh, a one, which was a total of 12, because, you know, mm, 12. I'm John fucking Carmichael. <laughs> because of nonsense. All right. Wait, I'm sorry, I'm John Carmichael. Thank you. The swearing's allowed. It's just funnier this way. No, it's better. That's exactly. I have the button. I might as well use it. Okay. Um, Asena, you go first. You move really fast, and... Uh, oh, I do? You've got a shotgun. You've got a laser cannon. You've got your punchy fists. And these are zombies. I, I, maybe you fought zombies before. I'm not sure. We, I think we did in another cemetery. <laughs> yes, and we also did in a. Uh, oh gosh, what was it called? A a a lab, a, a, a mortuary. Mortuary. That's yeah, what it was. that's right. But was I, were they whites or ghouls? I don't know. Anyways, the point is, uh, how do you want to do this? <laughs> we're not already there, but you know, there there's there's zombies. It's not going to take long. Yeah. I want to. I want to run up to the middle one, so that way I'm like right in the middle of the action. Okay. Yeah. Are you going to spend a? No, you don't have to spend a point because you're a rogue as well, so you can just use your bonus action to dash. Yeah. Nice. You're just allowed to do that. And Slucker is on my shoulder. Excellent. Whoop. You go running up the steps, charging towards the zombie, leaping over a grave, past Bulk and Skull, and what do you want to do? I want to kick him in the face. All right. That's a good thing to do. 
Where's my zombie voice? Ooh. I don't like the zombie voice, actually. I'll use Frank. Hard to hear. Words. Words. <laughs> Roll to kick it in the face. <laughs> this is a flat attack, no advantage. Don't I have advantage, though? Uh, you do have advantage. You could spend from chat if you want. Oh, or you to choose when? From yeah, you can choose when. Okay. Disadvantage yeah. has to go on your next roll. Uh, inspiration is you ch you choose when you want to use it. Well, that's absolutely a hit. Wow. Uh, you hit the zombie. They're pretty. Zombies are fairly tough, all things considered, for nine points of damage with your first attack. And wait a minute, because Lakura is there, isn't it? A sneak attack. Slakura is no. there. It is a sneak attack. <laughs> I was like, these action squads are not my allies. Oh, not I will not accept. Though. I will not accept help from the yeah, action you, you squad. Could, you could. I mean, that is your right. You're like, no, I don't want it. Uh, okay, so. Should I just add it to my next attack? Uh, Yeah, sure. Just turn it on for your second attack. That's fine. I and think you, you could also just click sneak attack and it'll just drop fine. the damage. I mean, you are correct, but let's just go oh. ahead and throw it this way. Or, or, way. Or, I mm -hmm. clicked it. It didn't work. Sad day. Unlucky. All right, go ahead and make your second boom, attack boom, with boom, sneak boom, attack. Wow, wow. Oh my. Uh, zombies have like no armor class whatsoever. So, yeah. that so is it hit still for, hits. For 22 points of damage. The thing about zombies is that they just won't stay dead. So. <gasps> Oh, battlefield damaged. I know exactly how I'm going to use that. <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, Wait, it means battlefield damaged. What? Oh, somebody just played my. a Steam card. Battlefield damaged. Hello. And I know exactly oh, how no. I'm going to use that. Uh, right oh, after a single no. turn. Anyways, zombies, when you hit them they and reduce them to zero hit points, they can make a saving throw to not die. Unfortunately for them, the save is based on how much damage they took, so the DC of this save is 27. Mm. Yeah. Ooh, 22. Close, it's but no bad. cigar. <laughs> uh, what happens to this zombie? Um, His body stays there, but his head goes flying. <laughs> I love it. I, I love it. Okay, excellent. Uh, I am deploying the battlefield damaged immediately. Oh, my. As you suddenly hear a, a, an enormous rumble beneath this crypt the one with the gargoyle on it on top of it hey mate what so 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 motherfucker so <laughs> all right so we're just going to go ahead and drop a nice big old crater here uh, i didn't have time to grab something nice oh here. hello what the hell oh, is that that's the, a crater the then. building shudders it shakes and then it completely collapses Oh and from inside, from the tunnel beneath, you hear the unmistakable voice. Destroy. Destroy. <laughs> destroy. Oh, no. As the Zorbots attack. Yes. Are there Zorbots in there? Zorbots oh, are yep. emerging from below. Oh, my giddy aunt. One Mark One. Two Mark Twos. And three Mark Threes. I knew oh. there was no way this could go bad. Wow. Look at how many wonderful creatures there are to destroy. I'm very happy. Wow. That's a lot of robots. Collect the specimens. Destroy meddlers. Collect the specimens. Destroy the meddlers. It is now Firepower's turn because Zorbots suck at initiative. John leans over to Har and whispers, now might be a great time because they're in fireball formation. She smiles. Har! I, I wasn't done. Oh, carry on. It's still your turn. <laughs> <laughs> You've used your bonus action to dash. So what are you doing? I'm activating a whale. Oh, that's right. You have that. Okay, cool. Go for it. Um, but I wasn't sure if uh, the undead could take necrotic damage, but now there's Zorbots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect. 
so because I killed this undead here, mm -hmm. killed? Don't know. Rekill um, it, yes. Rekill? Destroyed. Destroyed. You made it dead. When you make something dead, you've killed it. So if it was undead or if it was alive, but now it's dead, you killed it. I'm mainly doing this to look cool or scary. Mm -hmm. However, uh, the action squad wants to interpret it. Mm -hmm. But um, I'll activate my... Oh, I guess... Is it called Wails from the Grave? Or Whispers of the Dead? I got conflicting... Uh, Wails from the Grave. Wales there we from go. the Grave. See, uh, when you first said that, I was like, I activated my whale, and I was like, whoa. There's whoa. another thing there. <laughs> um... Is yeah, so I'll activate a whale. Like, what so are we that way. <laughs> I think I rolled 2d6. You target a second creature. Roll half the number of your sneak attack dice. So oh, do you normally roll 2d6? Yeah, roll 1d6, and then you're going to target one of the Zorbots. Just tell me which Zorbot you want to attack. Um, I guess the yellow one. Okay. The That's super cool. Zorbot 2. Mark 2. All right, hit it. Da -da 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 hey, there you go. Four points of necrotic damage. Let me just make sure that these uh, these bad boys are those. not immune to the necrotic damage. They are not. It corrodes and withers their exteriors. Yes, get rusted, fool. Yep. Four points of rusting damage, and they don't have any reactions that allow them to, uh, to leap into battle. All right. By the way, mate, I don't know if this is a feature, but uh, neither Asana nor John are appearing on the initiative counter. Uh, I've already sent Asana's down to the Shadow Realm, and I don't know why John... John is, is on a 12. You just have to, like, scroll way the heck down. Oh, no, he isn't. Oh, I, I was, that's I, because... Yeah. The, so the reason is because I see their initiative because I have their tokens from another page on there. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it's some weird DM stuff. Uh, mm -hmm, Asena, mm -hmm. did you have anything else? And did you have anything for Slakura? Oh. Eat Not the tree. Slakura can mostly like heal you and jump yeah. on people's heads and stuff like that. So you're good for Wait, Slakura? Slakura make it smell nice. Slakura yeah. can make it smell nice. And surrounded yeah, by all these zombies, uh, that's important. Yeah. He doesn't like the smell of the graveyard. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Smells like cherry blossoms. Anything else <laughs> for Asena? No. All right. Asana's turn is over. It's Hara's turn. Hara strolls up underneath the tree over here. Kind of does one of these. And then snaps her finger and casts Fireball. Yeah. <laughs> I need to get myself a like sexy like saxophone sound so I can play that right for fireball fireball is that, uh, is that right no, oh no a little bigger a little bigger oh no oh wow that looks cool. Where did you right. get that? I, I, I picked up a thing or two, you know. Hey, you know what else you picked up, mate? Whoa. What? Ninjas. I know. I've already added them to the map. What? <laughs> Chat, play the streamless card for ninjas. <laughs> we can't They've get anything done around here. <laughs> what if you wanted to advance the plot, but Chat said? No. Nine. Nine right. plot advancement. Uh, Fireball. And she's going to roll 8d6. Not bad. Not bad. For 28 points of damage. Uh, zombies are not very good at this. Mm, no. Dexterity saving throw. Failed. And I'm just going to kill them because I don't want to sit here rolling <laughs> dice all day playing with my action figures. Yeah, 15. That's still a failure. Um, okay. Yep. So all of the zombies are waxed by that. If it makes you feel better, they actually, even on a natural 20, couldn't roll high enough. I mean, so. I would I would give it to them on a natural 20 because oh, know, okay. I well, do natural 20s in this house. Hey, if it's good for the Yay. goose, it's good for the gander, my guy. I agree. I'm here for it. I also subscribe to 1s and 20s do cool shit. All right, John, I mean, cool. what are you going to do on your turn? 
what am I going to do? Yeah, because well, the next is a couple up. of of my heroes are coming up next, and I'd rather have yeah. you start taking your turn than me take a million turns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, what John's going to do is Robots he's going to roll Robots are resistant up. to fire. They are? Oh, that sucks. Carry on. I'm John's just... going to rush up. Can you give me a globe of darkness, please? Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, thank you, friend. Uh, John's going to go ahead and just rush up so that way he's right there in the thick of it with Asena, uh, mm. and going to go ahead and act hit activate uh, one of Krantaka's uh, uses of uh, what's the rage for today. What's the distance on that? I believe it's 15 foot radius. But let me double check for you. Character sheet. Spell. Show me darkness. 15 foot radius. Yep. So that should be six by six. Correct. And I'll give you control over this thing so that you can park it wherever you want. Mm, nice. Six by six. So John's speed is double for this turn when he activates his uh, his rage. And he's going to go ahead and rush up right. Why is it like doing halves? That's weird. I don't know. Oh, it's because I'm, gra I'm grabbing Chester. That's why. <laughs> All right, park your darkness before we keep talking, and I'm going to keep playing with my action figures as I roll a million dice over here. He's going to drop it right here on top of all these Zorbots, and that zombie moves up to this spot right here, and uh, John starts blasting because he I started activated, blasting. uses his action to cast a spell, and then he gets a additional action that he can use to make either movement or one extra attack, of which he's going to do the extra attack. Uh, so he's going to go ahead and shoot with uh, Krantaka. While they're in the darkness, they count as being blinded, right? So attacks against them have an advantage. That is correct. Very good. I love that. Okay. And he's just going to start shooting people that would be really, really difficult to uh, not be, you know, here. I'm going to go ahead and shoot at the big one right here in the middle. Okay. It has cover. It does not. I ignore cover because I have a pistol and I am an amazing uh, shot. Right. Your specialty at pistols. That's right. Yep. So... Uh, take this. Take this! It's a good thing you have advantage, because that was a natural one. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> is that all? Oh, I forgot warp spasm. Hold on. I was going to say, is that all your numbers? I feel like usually there's more numbers. Uh, no. <laughs> well, that was sad. Uh, these aren't, uh, fey or fiends, right? Zorbots are immune to psychic damage. Is this psychic damage? Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, that's psychic damage. John Carmichael, go yourself. Yep, yeah, understandable. Have a nice day. Okay, cool. Uh, that was shot one, and take 16, and go ahead and shoot again with uh, disadvantage, but it just gets canceled out to normal, so wha-bam! There we go. And ignore the psychic damage. Damn, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been real nice. Uh, that is also a hit for another 18 points of damage. Blam, blam. Gucci. And uh, as a... I don't, Think. Oh yeah, as a reaction, John's going to go ahead and use his uh, Talisman of the Infernal in mm -hmm. order to cast Armor of Agathus on himself. Alright, go ahead and add those temporary hit points. And uh, uh, that'll, that'll do it. Firepower goes... Oh, hello! Just this like, glowing green energy being wearing a, a costume... Greetings once again. We fight alongside each other. Most excellent. Yes, uh, we were actually sent here uh, to reclaim you and head on back to the department. But we have to deal with this oh. first. So let's oh. let's take care of this. All right. Uh, and firepower is going to go over, and I'm just going to have him blast this zombie because he does radiant damage, and radiant damage yeah. uh, always kills zombies if it reduces them to zero. Yeah, he does that. Uh, and then Skull is going to. Let's see, this zombie is dead. I think all the zombies are dead. Skull is going to shoot a barrage of metal shards from his metal skin. Ooh, interesting. And shoots all the Zorbots who failed their saving throws because they're in the darkness. So they just all take 11 points of damage. Nice. I'm, I'm kind of speed running all the npcs no for sure I feel like for it i feel like it's just better i agree all right and then john took his turn but there are not two johns and then lawrence booker green now has a cat sitting on his shoulder by the way 
Why are the dead rising? Why are the dead rising? Why are the dead? Oh. This is his sign. This is the first of Atropus' signs. As he draws closer, the dead begin to rise. John's just in his brain, like, <laughs> we had a year. What the heck changed to where we went from having no, a year no, to I mean, the dead with, arising? With, within a year, this effect begins, but something's accelerated it, and I don't know what it is. And at that exact moment, a ninja drops down from the trees behind... Uh, Lawrence, two ninjas emerge from the trees behind Lawrence Booker Green and head straight towards him with sh poisoned shurikens. Oh, no. And uh, that's where we're going to go ahead and take our leave you for the episode. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for watching. Let's let's do us a giveaway here. I have not forgotten about that giveaway. Ooh. Last chance to get in exclamation point Kerr, K-U-R in the chat uh, to make sure that you're enrolled. Go ahead and hit that in if you haven't already. I'm going to give you just a little bit of a moment here to do this. Um, and mate, just remind me, I thought we were doing, was it one physical and one downloadable? or Two digital and one physical, but I'm probably going to give away the physical next week. Just because. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're running down to the wire. So, I'll, yeah, come back next time and I'll do a giveaway for a physical copy. Oh, very All right. cool. Last call, last call, last call. Ten, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Drop it. Congratulations, some guy. Hey! You get yourself a PDF of Amazing Adventures 5e. Uh, I'll go ahead and hit you up about that after the show. And thank you, everyone, for watching. And we'll see you next time. Take care.